Hello and welcome back to my shop. Thanks for tuning in. Today's video we're going to take a look at another tool I've purchased. This is by far the most expensive tool I've ever purchased and I don't even get to keep it. This one is actually for my son. My son, let me tell you, he makes me so proud. He is not only a senior in high school, but simultaneously he is attending technical college to get a degree in welding. So I've purchased a welder for him to use at home so that he can practice and get through his schooling better. And then also when he graduates, he's gonna have this as a tool to move on in his career. So let's take a look at what we've purchased. The welder I've chosen for my son is the Miller Multimatic 255. Now, you know I'm a woodworker, not a welder, so I had to do quite a bit of research to figure out exactly what to buy. This Multimatic 255 seems to be pretty sufficient for anybody looking to get into the welding profession. This has the ability to do MIG welding, to do TIG welding, DC stick welding, and pulsed welding. So let's take a quick look at how to assemble this and get it ready for work. Before we go any further, I do want to remind you that I am not sponsored by Miller or anybody else for that matter. This welder was purchased out of my own pocket as a gift for my son to help him get through school. I will leave a link in the description below that is an affiliate link at Amazon. If you're looking to purchase one of these welders, it would greatly help me if you would use my link below. You'll get the same price you would otherwise, but I'll make a small commission and help me recoup some of the cost of this welder. Let's get back into the video. We start with unboxing and assembling the cart. This is actually really quick and easy. The cart comes in just three pieces and only takes a few bolts to assemble. Then we work on getting the welder unboxed and set up. The power cord does not have a plug installed. This allows you to use whatever type of plug you want to use. And because I'm not a licensed electrician, I won't be showing how to attach this. Then I'll attach the MIG gun. You just simply slide this into place and tighten the thumb screw. The control wire is indexed so that you can only put it together in one direction. Installing the wire spool is pretty self-explanatory. Just be sure to line up the small hole on the spool with the knob on that hub so the wire doesn't just freely spin inside there. Then you'll need to feed some wire into the MIG gun. Just be sure to hold onto the wire when you release it so it doesn't unwind into a big mess. For supplying power to the MIG gun, attach the power lead to the positive output on the front of the welder and turn it right until it's snug. Now we're ready to turn on the welder for the first time. On the bottom right, you'll see a button that says jog. Use this to feed the wire through the MIG gun. I found the easiest way to get the wire through without snagging is to remove the tip and then just slide the tips back on over top the wire. And the welder just secures to the cart with some simple latches. There's two gas ports on the back of the welder, one for TIG welding and one for MIG welding. We are setting this welder up for MIG welding right now, so we're using the lower port. Before you attach your pressure regulator to the gas tank, make sure you close it completely. It seems counterintuitive, but turning it to the left is how you close it. And then of course the cheapskate comes out to me again and I bought this tiny little tank. Clearly I should have bought a bigger tank. And of course the other end of your hose just attaches to the pressure regulator. So then we'll turn the gas on, set the pressure regulator at about 15 to 20 pounds, and then we're going to purge the lines. This is just getting the gas all the way to the end of the gun. For that we'll use this purge button on the front of the welder. So for a quick overview of some of the features, on the left hand side you have a dial that controls the voltage. There's a dial on the right hand side, that's going to control your wire speed feed. Then you have selections for MIG welding, for stick welding, for TIG welding, and pulse welding. The button on the bottom left is the setup menu. In here is where you can make all kinds of adjustments. 
You can set this up for your wire and gas types. You can set up for your wire diameter. And basically every other adjustment you can think of, you can do right from this screen. And as I mentioned, I'm a woodworker, so a lot of this stuff doesn't even make sense to me. If you're a welder, jump in the comments and let me know what does all this stuff mean. All that's left to do is hook up the ground lead, and then my son can give it a try. So he's going to take some scrap and just lay down a couple of beads to try this out. We're going to use the MIG welder first, followed by the stick welder. And obviously for the sake of time, this is all very sped up. Now we've got the welder all set up and ready to go to work. I'm sure that this welder has more features and capabilities than what my novice self could teach you. If you're a welder and you're familiar with this 255, jump in the comments and let me know everything I missed. Hopefully this video was useful for some of you. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, I ask that you please like and subscribe. And like I always say, even if you didn't, please like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.